We'll add some more to our design in just a moment, but first let's pause and make what we have look better. Our menu item's name is clearly the most important thing in each row, but it has the same font size as the price below. We can bring it up in size and weight by using the font modifier, which accepts any of Apple's dynamic type sizes. So we could say below this text, we're going to use dot font dot headline. Get a chunkier font there, a little bit bigger. As for this picture here, it looks okay as it is, but with a little bit of love, it would look better. For example, we could apply a clip shape modifier and ask it to be clipped to a circle shape. We could say this image here has dot clip shape using a circle like that to get circular images. Or we could apply a clip shape modifier, then add an overlay modifier so we place a shape on top of our image. For example, we create a circle over the image, then give that circle a two point gray border. We could say clip shape circle, then dot overlay with a circle using a stroke of color dot gray and a line width of two. So a nice chunky gray stroke and you can see just about there that gray stroke. If I zoom in slightly more, it'd be a bit clearer. There we go. There's our gray stroke around the image. Okay, that's enough styling. Let's look at something more complex. If we look back in menu.json, you'll see all our food types have restrictions attached to them. This one here has dairy, uh, has gluten, but is good for vegetarians, for example. This one here has uh, D and G. This one has just one. This one has uh, two. There's a selection of things like uh, you know nuts or not, for example, all sorts of restrictions and dietary information. So we're going to put that into our layout. So over an item row, the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's zoom out just a little bit so we can see what's going on more easily. There we go. The first thing we're going to do is add a new property in here to handle different kinds of restrictions. I'll assign each one of these things a different color. So I'm going to say static let colors will be a string color dictionary equal to, so I'll say for D, I'll use dot purple. For G, gluten, I'll say there's black. For N, which is nuts, I'm going to say we're using uh, dot red. Then we have S, I'll say is dot blue. And V, I'll say is green. So there's different kinds of colors for different pieces of dietary information. Second, we have to loop over all the restrictions for each item and put each one into a text view. So down here we have our V stack for the item name and price. Just below that, I'm going to add a for each. I'll say for each item dot restrictions, passing in the restriction like that, and text that restriction. Put it into a text view. D, G, N, S, V, and so on. Now we have a problem. If I press Command B, that code won't compile. As I mentioned earlier, we can put arrays into a for each as long as Swift UI knows how to identify each item in the array uniquely. We solve that by making our sections and items conform to the identifiable protocol, which uses the ID property to identify items. Here though, we have an array of strings, so we can't make them conform to identifiable. Instead, we need something else. We need to tell Swift that a string itself is the identifier for each item. So when it says D, that is its unique ID. There's no other Ds in the array. This can be done using the ID parameter for for each, passing in backslash dot self as its only parameter. So here in for each item restrictions, I'll say ID is backslash dot self. Use the string itself as the identifier. And now, when this code runs back, all being well, I'll press uh, Command Option P. Boom, there's our G and V restrictions for maple French toast. It has gluten, but it's good for vegetarians. That's pretty dull though. So let's spice it up with some modifiers. We'll add text restriction. Then we'll use uh, dot font, dot caption, give a slightly smaller font. Then dot font weight. I'm going to say is dot black, so a super bold font. I'm going to add a little bit of spacing around it by saying padding of five points, like that. 
Uh, for the background, I'm going to say dot background using our colors from the type. Uh, reading our restriction out of there, but we can't find it. We'll use default of uh, dot black, so a black color. Then we will uh, use dot clip shape again. So we can make this thing a circle like that. And finally, I'll say foreground color of dot white. So the text is white on its colored background like that. So we have this small bold font padding around it, some sort of colored background, uh, a nice circular shape and white text. We're going to do one more thing before we're done with the design of this item row. We're going to force the restriction text to be spaced apart from the rest of the row. SwiftUI has a dedicated view for this called Spacer, and I'd like you to place it just before this for each for our restrictions. So between the VStack and the for each, write Spacer like that. And it will force our two sides apart. So we have the left edge here with our image and VStack, then this big Spacer, then the restrictions on the right. Go ahead and run the code now, press uh, Command R, and it should be looking to come together quite nicely. Boom, looking good. Now if you think about it, if you've done UI kit work, that would take quite a long time to make using UI table view cell. Now if you do find uh, some labels are being clipped like here, here, and here, and here, this seems to be a very small early Swift UI bug. Fortunately, you can make it go away by using a layout priority of one for the V stack in your item row. That's this thing here with our text items. So I says this thing here has a dot layout priority of one. It's really important. I press Command R again. It'll build and run, and hopefully the text will now look correct. Boom. Much, much better. Hopefully, that'll go away in a future release.